Researchers at Arizona State University and the University of Illinois examined hurricane deaths in the U.S. from 1950 to 2012, excluding outliers Audrey and Katrina. Researchers analyzed the 47 most damaging hurricanes. Female-named hurricanes produced an average of 45 deaths. Male-named storms produced an average of 23 deaths. That's nearly double the number of fatalities. This difference was even more pronounced comparing strongly masculine to strongly feminine names. In judging the intensity of a storm, people appear to be applying their beliefs about how men and women behave. This makes a female-named hurricane, especially one with a very feminine name such as Belle or Cindy, seem gentler and less violent. The study claims that changing a severe hurricane's name from Charlie to Eloise could nearly triple its death toll. To test their hypothesis, researchers set up six experiments presenting a series of questions. When presented with the same scenario, participants predicted a hurricane named Alexander to be more intense than one named Alexandra. They were also more likely to evacuate for Hurricane Christopher than Hurricane Christina. The study, however, was criticized for its findings. But researchers responded with a rebuttal. Some complained that male hurricane names weren't introduced until 1979. But authors of the study responded by saying that even during the years when only female names were used, 1953 to 1978, the femininity of their names significantly predicted their death toll. Some also criticized the study for overstating the importance of hurricane names and ignoring other factors. We cannot claim, nor did we claim, that gendered naming is more important than other factors. Other factors certainly matter as well, but that doesn't mean we should ignore the apparent impact of the femininity of the names. The study recommends policymakers consider a naming system that reduces the influence of biases instead of the arbitrary naming system in place today.